Okay, I'm trying to stay out of these guys here, but we got one in, they got one in, uh, and one to go. So, not too much to show yet, not too much to say, but I'm excited, really excited. Okay, here's my Tesla Powerwall video. Let me uh, back up and we'll start from the beginning. All right, hey guys, it's Matt with Modern Artisan here. Um, it's been uh, it's been quite a while since I've made a video. Um, I did finally finish that bathroom and maybe I'll show that someday. Um, but yeah, it's done, it's good. It's actually right back in there. Um, today, I'm just gonna do a quick video on this Tesla Powerwall, which is a backup battery system for your home. And in my case, works in conjunction with solar. So uh, just gonna do a really quick uh, video I'm just just holding my phone here, just gonna film it this way and try and do a good job. And uh, I've shot some other clips and stuff along the way when we were installing it. So uh, maybe before we dig into the uh, Tesla product, I'll show you a quick overview of my solar system. Um, <clears throat> the solar, it's funny, solar system. Solar system installed at my house. And, uh, and I, there, I did a video on that a long time ago, or at least on the solar shed part of it. Um, so the, Solar shed is right there. Um, I'll go out there and show you the solar system quick, and then we'll go in the basement and talk about the power wall and, uh, and my journey with, with that whole thing. Ugh, it's really bright out here. Uh, so there's the solar shed. The panels are uh, really dirty right now. but uh, So that's one array. I have three arrays in total. Um, actually, really proud of that one. That's my own unique design. Let me flip the camera around here. And then there's that array that's only four panels. And then lastly, we have an array on my garage up there that has another, what is that, three by six, another 18 panels up there. So uh, three, 16, 20, 38. So we've got 38 panels in. So I've got 38 panels total on my house and shed, uh, which is a decent amount forget what that is maybe like a 12 or 13 kilowatt system but um not nearly enough for the power i use with charging three teslas but <clears throat> um it goes a long way it helps i mean it is so bright i can't even look at this phone <clears throat> okay uh but anyways by the way so here on the outside of the house we have my electric meter there which has always been there. Here's the new equipment. We have the shutoff, which is code. You have to have a shutoff for your array. Uh, but then this is the uh, Tesla gateway. And and so the Tesla gateway, let me get out of the sun here. Face the other way. The Tesla gateway uh, is the brains for the whole operation. So, <clears throat> so what that does is that kind of directs the traffic of is, are we sending power back out to the grid? Are we sending power to the Tesla wall and charging it? Are we using power from the Tesla wall? Um, and then there's an app that illustrates all of that. Now, <clears throat> it, it was literally like, I think over a year after I got my uh, solar panels and solar system commissioned until I actually could get my hands on the Tesla walls because of lead time and all that. Um, but I had, so I had to have the Tesla gateway and they did send me that. And so as long as you have the Tesla gateway, you can complete your system and then just hook the batteries up to it later. But you have to have the gateway, um, which is a Tesla product. And that kind of, that's the brains of the operation. So, and, <clears throat> and, you, and I'll show you on the app here in a second how that works. Okay, now we're in my garage. Um, this is the uh, combiner panel and it's an end phase product. Uh, because I have N-phase microinverters under every panel. So um, so it's not one big lump sum uh, inverter for each string or, or whatever, but um, each panel is converted independently to um, AC usable power for the house. And so that's helpful, especially if you have a shading issue. And, and also N-phase has a website that I can get on and actually uh, monitor the production of not just my whole system but of each individual array and so you can see if there's a, a problem for there's a shading issue for one of them or whatever so um that's pretty cool that's what i would used to look like look at uh before i got the tesla app and and all that here's a quick look at that uh enphase software that 
is a cloud base, so I can log into it from anywhere. Uh, but it shows my three arrays here, the garage, the shed, and the addition. Uh, there's one panel there that is always a little bit of an underdog as far as production because it gets a, a slight amount of shading from the overhang from the garage. But anyways, it's pretty cool. It shows panel by panel how much each one is uh, producing. And then you can, you know, pick different time periods and, and uh, there's graphs and reports. Um, so like this is a graph of the last several days. Ones that are perfectly shaped is a clear day. And to the extent that they're kind of jagged or missing parts, that's clouds or rain or whatever. Um, but, uh, but always it's like a perfect arc if there's no clouds. You know, sun comes up, sun goes down. So it's pretty cool. And then there's a lot of other stuff on here that I honestly never do. I mean, you can monitor the devices. I, I think it's more of a troubleshooting thing. If there's ever an issue, you can, you can look at each device individually. So that's end phase. So let's take a look inside here. Um, so literally, like what I said, it's a combiner panel. And so I've got each array coming in. We've got the garage array, the addition array, and then the back shed array. And then they're all combined and they go down to my panel. So I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, last stop on the grand tour here is uh, I'm in the storage, uh, storage room in my basement. And so that's why I've got the Tesla walls. I think they can go outside or inside. They're fairly, um, fairly tolerant to most weather, but we have them inside. Um, they're really tucked in there so you can't see very well, but green light, let's go, they're on, they're working. Um, so uh, so I just showed you the, com the combiner panel in my garage. And so my garage is right through there. So the power comes down from that end phase combiner panel and it ends up in here. And so that's this breaker coming in from the combiner. And then we also have uh, two tandem breakers coming in from the two Tesla wall. And so this power is coming in and it's going to the gateway, I believe. And then the gateway is deciding what to do with all of these streams of power or the, the needs, you know, and so it's just directing traffic and like I said, it's the brains of the operation. So uh, that's a new panel. I put that panel in um, when I did the solar because that's a whole separate issue. I was going to make a video on that, but I didn't. Um, but that was that was quite a deal taking that all out and replacing that. We just need we basically just need more room. I already had um, circuits combined and stuff like that, so we just needed more space for circuits. Uh, anyways, okay, so onward and upward here with this. All right, so now we're back full circle where the video began. Let me take you through some of the highlights of installing this and kind of some of the stuff I went through. Um, it's beginning of June now. This was, I think, uh, in January We were when this was filmed. So uh, these guys, um, they're an authorized Tesla Powerwall uh, installer. So they, I, even though I did all my own solar work, I had to hire them to do the uh, Powerwall. And so they hauled them down there. And uh, these guys, great guys, they worked all day long uh, installing and hooking these two things up. And then at the end of the day, when we were trying to get it set up, they just could not uh, get internet access to these things. It would not work. And turned out that my Wi-Fi was too new, broadcasting and too new of a band. And so uh, they left, and then I ran a hard line later to set it up myself. <laughs> All right, here's the Tesla gateway, uh, popped it open. There's the ethernet right there. And uh, we'll take out one of those knockouts on the bottom of the panel and we'll run our newly ran hard line to it and see what that does. So after the gateway uh, had internet access from that hard line, uh, was able to get it set up. I had some login issues at first, uh, but then the installers helped me with their own login information. Uh, so, but then that 
so then I could get on with the app. So this is the Tesla app, same one for the cars, and you just swipe over to the uh, power power wall. And uh, there's a problem though. So like on this day, must be the middle of the day, uh, because we're actually exporting power to the grid over eight kilowatts. Now, there should be solar panels in this illustration and it should show power coming in from the solar, but it doesn't. Uh, so what I realized was that um, we had forgotten or they had forgotten to put uh, CT sensors on the power coming into the combiner panel. And so uh, the gateway had no way of knowing how much power the solar array was actually producing. So I ordered some solar CTs. Um, yeah, the words aren't off. I'm just narrating over myself. Uh, so here's, here's the box of CTs that came in. I was shooting a little video and talking about it. But basically, they're just a sensor that goes over the power coming in from the solar. And then there's a low voltage line um, attached to that that gets run to the gateway. And so then the gateway knows how much power is running through that little square. And it will populate that information in the app. So uh, that's what I did. So here's what that looks like. You can see that plastic square kind of going over the power coming in. And then it's got these black and white low voltage lines that are run to the gateway. Um, they're actually spliced with the black and brown because they weren't long enough. So I spliced them there. And then, then those low voltage wires just run into the Tesla gateway and they get plugged in right there, that far right white little plug. And then we were done. Okay, so here's the Tesla app. Um, same one for the cars. Uh, actually showing the cars because I have one charging there. And so there's a pretty good load on the house whenever we're charging. And we'll see that uh, displayed here on the solar side of the app. So we'll keep swiping over till we get to the solar. And you can see the house is using 12.7, which is, which is quite a bit. Um, we're producing almost 10 kilowatts solar, which is actually very good. Uh, but because we're charging, it's not quite enough. And so it's getting the balance from the grid. And you can all see that displayed there. Okay, so now it just jumped down to only 0.9. Uh, I unplugged the car, and that's what happened. So uh, you can see the, that changed the load on the house dramatically. Um, and it's actually given a little bit of charge to the power wall. Uh, so you can see that. So the app, you can see like what's going on with the power, um, if it's coming in, going out, what it's going to. So here I plug the car back in and you can see the power usage for the home is going to ramp up pretty fast. And so in, I'm exporting to the grid and that's tapering down and it's, and it's putting, you know, the power is being allocated for the house then and we're, we're, we'll not export any power in a second here. So you can just see how it, it manages the power needs and power consumption. And so we went, right from exporting to the grid to now needing some power from the grid. And it manages all that seamlessly uh, without even, you know, just autonomously. One more illustration here is you can actually hit a button and go off grid and simulate a power outage. And so it's seamless. Like I, the lights don't even flicker or anything. It just switches over to using the power wall. And, uh, you know, our power usage isn't that high, so it just says more than 24 hours. If we were using a ton of power or we were, uh, or it had been a long time, it would tell you how much time is left at your uh, current consumption rate. So you could manage that and be more conservative if you thought the outage was going to last a while. So uh, it's pretty neat how you can look at that and, and simulate a power outage. Okay, I think I got the video edited back there. I'm just going to film uh, my closing Closing arguments, my closing thoughts here on the power wall. So, um, all right, so a couple things. You may or may not know that uh, Tesla power wall or other, there's other battery backups out there. Um, typically, if you install that in conjunction with a solar installation, then whatever incentives that you get federal and state uh, would, would uh, apply to the, the cost of the um, battery backup system also. And so uh, that's why I did it at the same time as solar, so I could take advantage of those credits. If you install it later, my understanding is you cannot take advantage of those credits. So um, let's see, what else? Uh, also, uh, I live in the middle of Iowa, so power is pretty cheap. And so uh, for me, it's it's purely like a backup uh, situation, kind of peace of mind. It, almost, it pretty much takes the place of like a generator or something like that. but. 
Um, but I know in other parts of the country where you would have more of a, a, a tiered or a time sensitive uh, uh, rating or a cost for your power, um, the Powerwall can pay for itself and is very advantageous in those situations because you can uh, store up power during the day um, from the from solar and then uh, and use it during the day. And then if you need power from the grid or whatever, you can uh, you can charge it up at night when the rates are really low. So it's different situations for different people. For me, it's pretty much just backup. Oh, and one more thing. Uh, this is kind of important. Interesting, at least. Um, so when you install solar on your house, um, you might think that like if the power goes out, that like you can at least still use the uh, solar power, uh, but you can't, um, unless it's a really weird installation because most inverters are set to cut out or, or there's some mechanism that cuts out if the power goes out. And the reason for that is safety for the utility guys working on the lines. Uh, they don't, they don't want people with solar back feeding the lines. Uh, so, um, but installing the battery backup Tesla or probably other ones too, allows you to island and uh, and to run independent of the grid. So that's a big reason also to have battery backup is because you, you can't run solar independent of the grid typically without a battery backup. So, um, and depending on your, uh, so like at my house, my daily needs would be, they're larger than the, so the uh, what I produce so with solar. Um, but I could be conservative. And so like, say if the power goes out for hours or even a day, no problem. The power wall's got that covered. Um, if it turns out to be a week or indefinite, then, um, I could, I could run longer than the power walls can run because the solar will keep dumping new energy into them. So I would definitely have to cut back or at least charge the cars, um, much less. Um, but we could more or less run uh, indefinitely between the battery backup in the, um, <clears throat> in the solar. So that's just, I think that's an important point that a lot of people don't know is that you can't usually run solar, uh, off grid without battery backup. Hopefully it won't be that long before I do another video. Uh, hope to see it before, before it gets too long. So catch you later guys.